All right, now, there is no single gene that determines whether an individual is likely to be a gay or a heterosexual. A new study on human sexuality has quashed the traditional ideas of the existence of what was earlier described as a possible single gay gene. But the largest study of its kind is based on genetic analysis of almost about half a million people. And experts say that it provides one of the clearest pictures of genes and its relationship with sexuality. The study states that five of the genetic markers were quote-unquote significantly associated with the same-sex behavior, but even these are far from being predictive of a person's sexual preferences. But the study concludes that genetic factors accounted for at most 25% of the same-sex behavior. But the rest is attributed to a complex environmental factors such as upbringing and personality. Now, the study also puts to rest the idea of a so-called gay gene, a term that was coined in the year 1993 when studies in genetics and sexuality were still pretty nascent. So let's delve a little deeper into what the study talks about and how it is important. Now, in the early 1990s, genetic researchers were determined to prove that homosexuality was somehow hereditary. Now, studies were conducted on twins and a particular gene on the X chromosome was identified as the reason behind being gay. But this so-called gay gene theory was slammed as being narrow and faulty. And over the years, scientists worked towards understanding a more complex connection between genetics and human sexuality. And this latest study is now stating that homosexuality cannot be attributed entirely to genes and that there are other environmental places that can in fact contribute to the way sexuality develops in an individual. Now, the Earth's oceans and glaciers are set to wreak havoc on humanity if they continue to melt at the rate that they are doing. Now it's a disaster that we have called for. Global warming and climate change are something that we at Vion World is One have been reporting on for quite some time. And in the latest draft, a United Nations report has warned of irreversible sea level rise. Take a look at this report. The clock to the tipping point has already started ticking. We have set in motion a series of destruction. These could unleash misery on a global scale. These ice melts are all heading towards the oceans. They will contribute to the already rising sea level. Several of our cities are already under the threat of drowning. A draft UN report has warned of disasters more apocalyptic. It says by 2050, several megacities and small islands will experience extreme sea level events. By 2100, annual flood damages are expected to increase by two to three orders of magnitude. This is even if we manage to cap global warming at two degrees Celsius. There could be an increase in superstorms and their damages. Hundreds of millions of people could be displaced by rising sea levels. The global ocean water line will rise enough to displace more than a quarter of a billion people. There could be steady decline in fish stock. All of these could be experienced in this very century. Experts say that the melting glaciers will first give too much and then too little to the rivers. This will affect billions who depend on the ice melts for fresh water. The IPCC report warns that unless we make deep cuts on emissions, at least 30% of the northern ice could melt by the end of the century. This would unleash billions of tons of carbon, and it will also accelerate global warming. This scientific assessment is the fourth such time in less than a year. What does this tell us? Shouldn't we all rethink our priorities? Our world is changing, and it is changing for the worse. We are the only hope, and only we can stop disaster from unfolding. So instead of quarreling over nuclear weapons, 
fighting migrants and brawling over trade tariffs, our world leaders should stop for a moment and think, is all this really worth it? It is high time we reviewed our priorities. Bureau Report, we on World is One.